Right. Today we're getting stuck into the engine kit. And we're going to start with the engine itself. This does look like This is, here we go, the BT100. So, this is the second BT I've come across. Of course, I used one on the Mark V build. I've never liked the way that these are pointing up. So, one of the first things I'm going to do is flip that around. All right, I dislike the spark plugs being shipped mounted in there because I feel like there's a chance something's going to get broken. Uh, so we're going to take all this apart and have a look inside the cylinder. Um, now on my BT100 I crushed the copper gasket um, and I ended up just wrapping it in Teflon tape with no gasket in there and it ran fine, barely leaks. Uh, but this time around you get one shot at mounting that copper gasket. This time around, I'd rather seal it properly because finding replacement rings is near impossible. Here are our handle, our throttle grips. I mean, they're not excellent quality, but at least this chrome will suit those ape hangers. It's going to be interesting fitting these cables to that frame with the ape hangers. I think I think I may have to get creative here and use a custom cable. I'm not entirely confident in my soldering skills, but basically when you use a longer cable, first of all, you've got to, that's the bit that goes into the carb slide. You've got to solder uh, a little tip under there because obviously you can't thread that end through a cable sheet and expect it to work. Here's the tensioner. This is the shitty style tensioner. I don't like these because there's only two points of contact over the over the tube and there's just not enough to hold it in. Uh, we'll have to see how we go. But the proper ones can be bought aftermarket for a couple of dollars anyway. So this will still be all right short term, I think. I'm just disappointed to see this crappy hardware in the so-called upgraded kit. Here's our exhaust. Right, this exhaust has a massive dent in it, you can see there. It's not going to affect too much, but it's still annoying. This style of exhaust is particularly hard to replace aftermarket. So I'm not filled with confidence at the quality of the hardware in this kit, unfortunately. Uh, they've cheaped out on the hardware. The engine, I'm not worried about. It's everything else around it that I'm a little bit upset about because I've had better quality hardware in cheap and nasty kits. So this it is all, all things that can be upgraded aftermarket over time. You can, you know, pick and piece uh, each individual part that you want to upgrade, but it's just extra money. I'm sure this stuff will work. It's just less than ideal and I don't like that. Here is our baby fuel tank. We do have an upgraded four litre tank to go on, but that tank came without a fuel pet cock. Um, So I'm probably going to just start with this smaller tank 
so I can at least get the, the engine running and then I can up, upgrade to the larger tank later. This is an un, unusual clutch lever. I've not quite seen one of this design before. See, that can get, that's not going to get jammed up when it has a cable in there, but I'm failing to see how this clutch lever actually works. This is the worst clutch cable design I have ever seen. I don't know what this is, but I'm telling you right now, this is not going on this bike. I'm going to go take one of my clutch levers out because this is rubbish. This doesn't even work. This is the stupidest design I've ever seen in one of these kits. The lockout button doesn't lock out. And if it does, forces the clutch cable up out of its little sheath. That's going to damage the cable within a few pulls. That's, that's shit. But luckily I have high quality spares and a series of bikes that aren't running anyway. So I'm going to take one of my good ones and use that instead. So the story of the shitty hardware continues with this box, bog stock standard NT carb. Now there's nothing actually wrong with these carburetors, but if you're going to sell an upgraded kit, at least actually upgrade the parts. What we're going to do is we're going to get stuck into this carb. I'm going to just make sure that everything's tight in there. Okay. Now, one of the things that often falls out is, can we see under there? There is a little pin. Um, basically that opens and closes the fuel valve here. I've had that pin drop out numerous times. Um, sometimes what I feel I need to do with these is just bend these down a bit um, because if the float bowl's not actuating that pin uh, then the fuel won't shut off and the carb will leak. All right, I'm happy with the way that looks in there. Nothing's loose, nothing. Um, looks like it's gonna come apart on us. It's always a good idea to check that this little screw here is snugged up, but not over tight. Because that is of course the drainage plug for the float bowl. If you over tighten it, you'll ruin that little gasket and you'll get leaks out of here. So the first thing we want to do is get rid of that spark plug. Now, on top, these are just 10 mil, which I'm not too crash hot about. I prefer the, the kits with the, the thicker hardware. But we're going to crack into here.
and just see what it looks like on the inside. We do have to be particularly careful with these because if these get threaded, they will be a bitch to replace. This is a single piece cylinder, which means only one gasket. And unfortunately, they've powder coated this engine and sprayed straight over the top of the gasket. So it is a delicate operation to separate the cylinder from the gasket without tearing it. But it's very important that we that we do. manage to so looking inside our cylinder head or our jug it does look fairly clean in there I'm not going to do any any port work to this just because I really don't think we'll need to they are a pretty solid unit There's plenty of room in that exhaust gasket, uh, in that exhaust port, for widening. But we shouldn't need to do anything. I certainly didn't on my existing BT. Right, I think we can come back down here now. All right. Basically, all I want to do here is just examine the rings. I'll have to give it a close examination and just make sure that uh, nothing's gonna snag on the ports. Uh, so I'm gonna stop the video, do what I need to do, and I'll check in once I'm done. So one of the things we need to do, I pulled off this intake manifold because I just wanted to turn it around so it's pointing down into the engine and not fighting gravity. Uh, we are going to need to port match this gasket because there is a massive lip there and that's a restriction on the intake. So easy to fix up too. The problem I'm having is of course that the gasket has been painted to the frame. Getting it off without tearing it is an exercise in patience. And this is why I grew my fingernails. We have one separated gasket. All right, now I don't know if the camera will, ah, oh, there we go. You can see the profile of the port, which is everything that I need to carve away for that to match the port. And that's quite a restriction if you think about it. So we'll get the Dremel out and we'll just tidy that up to match to the port profile. Everything in here feels nice and smooth. Um, there's no jagged edging, no like casting defects. And that is good. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mount this cylinder back on, get that right put back together.